Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon 101.4 Quirks. We've made our way through floggers, cat of nines, and now we're on to quirks. I want everyone out there to pat themselves on the back. You're autodidactic learners, which means you're self-directed. We're learning about things that we didn't learn about in elementary school, high school, or college. We're learning about things that we have an interest in. So some of the characteristics of self-directed learning is you, you have a desire to learn about something new. Uh, you take the initiative to start the learning process and you look for resources or resourcefulness that will allow you to persist until you've completed the learning task. Our task today is just going to be to learn more about quirts. There's two basic styles of quirts that are common. This is a western quirt or I would call it a tack shop quirt because you'll find them very commonly in tack shops. They're short, they're not very expensive to buy, maybe 40 to 65 bucks for a, a, a pretty good leather quirt. And we're gonna use the same four techniques we've been using with floggers and cat and nine. You can do a short quirt with a bow and arrow. You can come over the shoulder. Now a little bit of a modification with a short quirt. When you do horizontal, with a flogger, I would lock my elbow in and let the tails, but with a short quirt, because it's so short, I'm gonna ask you to use more arm motion and let your arm be part of the toy. And then when we move to the forward figure eight, if I lock my elbow in, it's gonna make the toy react too quickly. If I use more arm, then I can have that toy just as an extension of my wrist and have much more control over, uh, over the arc of the toy. So Western quirk. The other, the other quirk that's not quite so common, but it's very useful if your goal is to finally get to a single tail, is a dog signal quirk, which is really just a dog signal whip or a snake whip that instead of finished with a fall and a cracker is finished with a viper tongue or a quirk. A quirk typically has two tails, that's one of its characteristics. So this is gonna throw much more like a single tail would, only instead of controlling many tails, like with a flogger or a cat of nine, we only have to keep two under control. Bow and arrow, over the shoulder, horizontal, and the forward figure eight. The advantage to coming over the shoulder, as opposed to the bow and arrow, is you get to hit yourself. All right, this is the last whip we're gonna look at today, and it, it kind of doesn't fit as a quirt, but I put it in with quirts because it has two tails. It's called a pig slapper, and it is whip-like. It has a short thong, and it ends with, uh, with two pieces of leather that kind of slap together. But the techniques have not changed. Bow and arrow, over the shoulder, horizontal, and our forward figure eight. The key word today is going to be heel knot. Now we called this a Turk's head in video number one, but English is great. We have multiple names for the same thing. It's called a heel knot because of the location of the knot. The type of the knot is a Turk's head, but the key word today is heel knot. 